Hello, my name is Brianna Penna, and welcome to my theorist presentation. In my presentation, I will cover the life and legacy of one of the most influential thinkers about education in the late 20th century, Paulo Freire. Paulo Freire was born on September 19, 1921, to a middle-class family in Recife, Brazil. Freire's family suffered greatly during the Great Depression of 1930, and in 1931, the family relocated to the less expensive city of Roberto dos Corapes. He ended up four grades behind in school, but he loved spending time playing football with the other poor children. These experiences shaped his concerns for the poor and influenced his educational viewpoints in the future. Freer blames his failure in school on his family's poverty and hunger. He says, I didn't understand anything because of my hunger. I wasn't dumb. It wasn't lack of interest. My social condition didn't allow me to have an education. Experience showed me, once again, the relationship between social class and knowledge. Eventually, his family's situation improved out of poverty. Freire became a grammar teacher while he was still in high school, where he strived to understand students' expectations. He went to law school at the University of Recife, but never actually practiced law. Instead, he became a Portuguese teacher in secondary schools. He married fellow teacher, elementary school teacher, Elza Maia Costa de la Viria, and had five children, three of which became teachers as well. Freire went on to become a distinguished educator and theorist. He wrote and co-wrote over 20 books won and won many awards along the way. A surprising fact I learned about Freire is that in 1964, he was imprisoned for 70 days and exiled from Brazil for 15 years as a traitor because he taught 300 farm workers to read and write in 45 days and a military troop didn't like that. There are four aspects of Freire's work that are of great significance that I will focus on in my presentation. The first is his emphasis on dialogue. Freire was not a fan of formal education and believed that education cannot be successful with a teacher talking at a student. Education should not be based on conversation. Sh education should be based on conversation and mutual respect. He is known for his attack on the idea of banking. The banking concept of education is the idea that a student is an empty bank account where a teacher deposits information. He believed that education should not involve one person acting on another, but rather people working with each other. The quote by Freire on the bottom right summarizes his viewpoint on this issue. It reads, liberating education consists in acts of recognition, not transferals of information. This idea can still be applied today, and in the next slide, I will show an example of how this theory is associated to a problem in education today. Emphasis on dialogue and example. The idea of banking is still relevant today. Standardized testing is an example of how students are looked at as objects, just as Freire criticized. Teachers are required to take time to administer tests such as the PSSA and teach students certain things required by law only for them to spit out a score. This comic demonstrates, demonstrates how this is not how teaching should be approached. This is not how students acquire knowledge. Teaching should be conversational and should include more than speaking at a student. The second aspect of Freire's most valued work is his concern with praxis. Freire, be Freire believed that it's not enough for people to come together in dialogue to gain knowledge of their, so of their social reality. They must act together upon their environment. He was concerned with praxis and action upon action that is informed. Freire defines praxis and pedag pedagogy of the oppressed as reflection and action upon the world in order to transform it. 
He believed that through praxis, oppressed people can acquire a critical awareness of their own condition and, with their allies, struggle for liberation. The drawing on the bottom of this slide is a great visual to better understand what praxis is. The third aspect of Freer's most valued work is critical pedagogy. Critical pedagogy was first described by Freer as the philosophy of education and social movement that combines education with critical theory. Freer's pedagogy of literacy education involves not only reading the word, but also reading the world. His idea involves an exchange between teachers and students where both learn, question, reflect, and participate in meaning making. An important aspect to his critical pedagogy is conscientization, or critical consciousness, the process of developing a critical awareness of one's social reality through reflection and action. The two book covers on the top left and right of this page are Pedagogy of the Oppressed and Education for Critical Consciousness, which are two of his most popular books. This idea of critical pedagogy is still relevant today, which you will see in my next slide. Critical pedagogy, an example. Freire's theory of critical pedagogy is associated with a problem in education today. Teachers can become too headstrong on teaching students subject material that they can forget about the students as individual learners. Teachers must try and divide the power among the instructor and the classroom. This will encourage students to become more proactive in their own education and allow for more creativity. This theory could end the culture of silence in the classroom. The fourth and final most important aspect of Freer's most valued ideas is the Easter experience. Freer used Christian metaphors to help explain his, his ideas. One of his metaphors used is the Easter experience. The educator for liberation, the idea is that the educator, ed, educator for liberation has to die as the unilateral educator of the educatees in order to be born again as the educator educatees of the educatees educators. More simply, an educator is a person who has to live in the deep significance of Easter. He believed that teaching is a very noble profession, and those who go into it must be ready to lead by example, thus calling for continued personal reflection to remain worthy of the profession. This idea is still relevant today, which you will see in my next slide. The Easter Experience and Example the idea of the Easter experience calls attention to a problem in education today. Freer believed that teaching is one of the most noble professions one could have, and teachers should be role models to our students. It seems as if now the media covers so many stories of teach teachers taking advantage of students. And as you can see from the horrific news headlines, society seems to have lost the idea that teachers require a spiritual rebirth. That covers my four most important aspects of Freer's theories. Later in life, in 1986, his wife Elsa died. People close to him felt that he had given up after the loss of his wife and they worried that he might die as well. Freer became reconnected with an old student, Maria Arahudo, who was once a student when he was a principal. He ended up marrying Maria, who continues with her own education work today. He often says that, said that Maria saved his life. She was the culmination of the radical love he sought. Freire ended up dying of heart failure on May 2, 1997, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. For my final slide, I'd like to present an interview clip of Paulo Freire speaking about culture and education.